calling this meeting back to order. And we are still on 8.4. Um, so I will turn this back over to staff to report back on uh, where we left off yesterday and where you would like to proceed from here. Excellent, thank you. So through the chair, we left off our discussions yesterday speaking of the village commercial area and the gross floor area provided under 16.3.8. Um, the, the recommendation from staff is to maintain the uh, maximum combined gross floor area of 23, 23 meters squared of village commercial use. Bray Creek um, that's permitted in the C1 area. We also want to acknowledge that there is commercial, uh, village commercial use provided for in the RC3, RC4, and the, the, tour, the two tourist accommodation um, zone areas as well, which could combine uh, to an additional uh, close to a thousand meters squared. Uh, specifically for the RC3 uh, and RC4, there will be another 6,500 square feet or around 600 meters squared that can be provided as ground floor commercial um, associated with those zone areas. And I'll, I'll leave it there. If the board has any further input on, on the village commercial area, we'd be happy to receive that. Thank you. Questions or input at this point? Think we're good. Think, sorry, through the chair, the, the other piece of information, if there were um, any desire to bring in any phasing language, staff would recommend that that be done in the uh, land development agreement. Okay. <clears throat> Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Stoner. Thank you. Through the chair. So just to clarify on the commercial phase. Uh, when this went from second hearing to public, sorry, from second reading to public hearing, um, the language was to include, uh, I'm just reading the second reading report, 23, 23 square meters gross floor area of commercial space in the C1 zone. Was that a maximum, a minimum, or just 23, 23? It was, so through the chair, um, the language that was received by the board at first reading was a maximum combined growth floor area of 23, 23 meters squared. Staff was recommending as a proposed amendment um, to add in the language a minimum combined growth floor area of 1,400 meters squared. And then in addition to the maximum being uh, remaining the same, which would allow for some, some phasing and some flexibility to reflect market and community conditions. And the developer is um, in agreement to add that minimum, uh, which doesn't affect, it may reduce density, but it's it's in the lowering density, not increasing density. So that change is allowed um, after, after the public hearing. And it was, um, this item was discussed just in general, the size of the, the commercial area was discussed um, at, the, at the public hearing. <clears throat> Thank you. Mike? Uh, I recognize that some of the comments in the public hearing were concerns over the, over uh, too big a commercial or too dense commercial area. Um, I, I know the board's intention going back a number of months was to make sure that as time goes on, there is the ability for the market to expand commercial space in the sense that we're trying not to build a full commuters community. So we don't want people jumping in their cars to go to a physiotherapist or to go to whatever um, and be able to provide it within the complete community. So I'm not still not entirely comfortable that the 1400 makes ensures that there is the room to grow as the community grows. Again, we're talking about a couple thousand people over time at build out. So um, I'm wondering where the 1400 came from. I'm, I'm bottom line. I'm more comfortable with 2300 that it has to be provided and accounted for. Um, I don't mind putting the maximum on there because of the concerns that came out of the public hearing, but I'm not comfortable with 1400. I feel like we want to make sure that there's ample for future growth available. It doesn't have to be built out now. Like you say, phasing 
can be worded and included as as time needs. Uh, I don't want to force build them, but I want to make sure that there is. You know, I look around town the size of Pemberton, that's, you know, 3,500 um, and the amount of services that are required. So I want to make sure they're able to do that. Sorry, and that wasn't a question anymore. It turned into a comment. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, Director Elliott. My understanding, though, I think from what Ms. Dewar said is that we could secure that amount of 2023 in the land development agreement, could we not? So the language doesn't have to change in the bylaw as presented at public hearing, but we could secure the phasing and, and that amount over time in an agreement. Through the chair, that is correct. And we, the, the land development agreement will be finalized and registered at bylaw adoption. So we have the opportunity, I believe then today to uh, pass a motion that uh, the land development agreement capture um, <coughs> a uh, minimum of 2323 of commercial. Through the chair, that is correct. And and if that is the direction the board wishes to go, we should remove the um, amendment that was added, adding the minimum 1400 meters gross squared and just leave the existing language that states of maximum and then provide clarifying language in the land development agreement. Uh, and, a, and a resolution directing that would be helpful. Thank you. Would someone like to make that motion? Yep. Moved by Director Rayo, seconded by Director Richmond. Any comments? Uh, Karen, do you have a comment? No. Okay. I'll we'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Go ahead. Can I just clarify what we voted on? Was that just to remove the minimum or also on the land bill? Thank you. And now, now resolution to include in the land development. Is that yeah, I think that was captured in the intention of that. I think it, right, the, language, the language was in there. Yeah. It, it's a two-parter. Leave the existing language and um, capture the minimum in the land development. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, mm. are we ready <laughs> to make some motions? Move along. Would you like to move Seven that? Things. Well, we can't do it all at once. Okay. We we could. Oh, we can do the first one, two, three, four, five. Okay. <clears throat> Which are one, two, bylaw 1726, yeah, bylaw 1727, 17, and um, Ministry of Transportation, and, Bodhi, and Border Protection, yeah. and Covenant uh, Housing Agreement by yes. law. So I'll move all that, that, move those five. Moved by Director Rainbow, seconded by Director Mack. Any comments? Anyone opposed? Motion carries. And then the next three. What can I do next? The next one. Next, next one. one. I'll move that. That the corporate officer be authorized to sign and meet documentation as may be required. Moved mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. Director Rainbow, seconded by Director mm -hmm. Richmond. Comments? Anyone opposed? Motion carries. I'll also move the next one. The cash funds in the amount of four hundred thousand and five uh four hundred and five thousand uh dollars. I'm not saying that right. That the cash <laughs> as per the SLRD community amenity contribution policy and to support the required expansion of the house down east fire protection services be submitted. Prior to adoption, moved by Director Rainbow, seconded by Director Mayor. Comments? Anyone opposed? Motion carries. And that staff be directed to continue their discussions with the District of Squamish to define specific impacts. Moved by move Director up. Stoner, seconded by Director Birch Jones. Sorry. Comments? Yeah, I'm surprised that we we're going to get through third reading and not have any comments on all the work that has been accomplished to date. So. I will me put my comments for uh, where we are in general with um, adoption of third reading and this motion in particular around directing ongoing work with the District of Squamish. I want to thank staff uh, for all of the years of work behind this proposal to get us to third reading. Um, for the area director for chairing the, the public hearing in August and for those who came out to the, to the public hearing to voice their support and opposition. Uh, both in person as well as all the letters that we received uh, on this very significant application um, that the board has wrestled with for many years. I think 
it's really important to remember that there were already development rights on this property. And I think through staff, uh, with direction from the board, we've gone to a really good place in terms of what is being proposed here. I think it's a much more forward-looking community uh, than what was originally available to the developer. Um, I appreciate the diversity of housing forms that are now presented. There are no fossil fuels going into any of this development. Um, there's significant amounts of contribution to affordable housing. And so I think these are all things that uh, as a regional district, we should be pushing for in these larger scale developments. And so I wanted to thank the board for their careful deliberations of these really important conversations over the last few years so that we could get this proposal to a place where hopefully uh, we don't have a commuter community. We have something that will be able to service the population uh, who can live and work and play there and not necessarily have to get in their cars to, to drive up the street. Um, I think that this last motion uh, helps reflect uh, some of the concerns that the District of Squamish did still have uh, and outlined uh, as part of the package for the public hearing and appreciate uh, the willingness to continue to work in a collaborative process to try and find solutions to uh, address the impacts that growth of this magnitude will have on our community. And so um, I feel confident that we will get there in the end. Uh, and, uh, I will have been supporting third reading and I'll support this motion as well. But thanks, everybody. Any other comments? Um, I'm not sure if this is the best place to make this comment, but I'm, I'm going to. Um, as I said yesterday, a couple of months ago, I had no idea of the opposition that existed. I shouldn't say that. No, right, it's the wrong place. So. That's fine. I think it's been said. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much to both of you for all of your work. It has not been easy, but it has been more than Okay, we are moving along to 8.9, which is the oh, eight. I have on my list here 8.9. We'll go to 8.8, area B, housekeeping and agricultural update. It's not even in this yesterday. We did 8.6. Which was there was a motion to refer. 8.10, we removed as part of the approval of the agenda. 8.8. Okay. And what about 8.7 then? We did that yesterday. What? Alex's last presentation yesterday. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Director Needham is here for questions. If anyone has any questions on the uh, package. This, this is 8.8. Correct. This is the amendments. request for decision on an OCP amendment <clears throat> bylaw regarding area B housekeeping and agricultural updates. Go ahead. Sure. And, and I, I mean, I have spent some time. I, first of all, I, the desire to update the area B OCP is in no way directed by the area B director. This is sort of staff things are coming up and things need to be done as they're going along. And so it's called housekeeping, but when I look at it, it's it's a lot more than housekeeping. Um, I have spent some time um, with, with Anna on the phone and we changed a few of the items in here. And some of that is, is better than it was before. What I would like to ask is for this to come to the EAD committee um, so that could be reviewed and I could have a discussion with with staff there, I have, you know, a good hour or so work to do with them at a minimum, and I, I don't think this table is the most appropriate place for that. So, well, um, would you refer it to the EAD? Yes, please. Okay, we have a seconder, Director Mack. 
Uh, Director Needham, go ahead. I, I'm just um, I'm just unclear. Are we referring to? I just want to make sure, uh, Director Birch Jones, which report eight point eight, which is Ag OCP agricultural uh, uh, the updates. Okay, you, and also you've got um, the official community plan amendments in there. Yes. Okay. And, so and I just was confused by the by. Yeah, you referred to Anna, but this is not Anna's. So that's sorry. A yeah, while okay. ago, Anna did okay. some work on some of this, and she removed some of the clauses that I found didn't fit very well in B. But there's quite a bit more work to do. So, yes, just to refer it. Okay. Thank you. I'll call the question. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Now eight point nine. This is a request for decision on design guidelines for affordable and multi uh, multifamily housing OCP amendments. And we're going to direct meeting. Yeah, sure. So this uh, report has uh, been to the EAD and the board a few times. Um, so it's now been pared down after a referral process where we received some very minor comments from Interior Health and Vancouver Coastal Health. And so we've changed just a couple of things. If you scan to the end, you'll see the highlighted bits that have changed. Highlighted in this one, sorry. Um, so essentially, there were some minor changes around um, let's see, including policies that recognize mobile home parks as a valuable contributor to affordable housing in area B and area D, encouraging mm -hmm. passive design, um, amending the unit size recommendations in order to encourage more family friendly units um, in order to make them a little larger, and simplified design recommendations. Um, with regard to kitchens and shadow analysis, et cetera. And then specific changes proposed for electoral area B, C and D um, have also been reviewed um, respectively. So those minor changes have been made. They don't really change the nature of the OCP amendments too much, but I think they make them a little bit better. And again, this is um, this is based on recommendations from our housing needs and demand study that we were to do this work in order to um, create some design guidelines uh, for affordable housing. We don't see a lot of affordable housing in the electoral areas, but it's good to have some guidelines for when we do. Okay. Question? Yeah, Question. thank you through the chair. Um, appreciate the changes on the unit mix. Uh, I think we increased the number of three bedrooms, which is really appropriate. One thing that jumped out at me is that we don't define anything for studios. And so I'm just curious if that's not a unit size that we are looking for in the SLRD or if that's an oversight. Um, this table was based on information that we got from the province. Yeah. Dr. Birch Jones. Um, I, I think I'm happy with this. I think most of the prescriptive clauses are like, you know, around how the kitchen counter should look. And where, that I think I think all those changes were made. And um, so, yeah, thank you very much for the work. And okay, would you like to move that the uh, second readings are given and the public hearing is scheduled on an electronic basis as laid out in the report? Yes. Moved by Director Birch Jones, seconded by Director Mack. Any other comments? Just a question. The public hearing is for Area D as well. It's, it's for all, all of us. I'm looking at Is it just the. I was looking at the report, which had give second reading for Area B. Area C and Area D. Right. Second reading and public hearing, but the public hearings will happen all together, chaired by the area director, uh, the EAD 
chair with you as the alternate. So we don't have to have three separate public hearings. No, no, that's uh, okay. That's fine. So I'm sorry. Okay, I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Motion carries. And just for the board's information, we're planning to schedule that public hearing in line with another public hearing okay. so that they'll all be on the same agenda. Great. Thank you. And you got a date. Go to pencil in mm -hmm. with 27. Pencil. Pencil. Go ahead. Is it going to be online? Yes. Okay, let's move along. Uh, we've done 810, we're moving to 8.11, which is the permissive tax exemption bylaw. We have two men coming in with us. Great, thank you. Good afternoon, Director LaFrance. Thank you for being here with us today. Um, we have your report regarding permissive tax exemptions in front of us. Uh, if anyone has any questions from the report, uh, Director LaFrance is happy to answer any questions. Do you want to tops of the waves? No. Okay. Okay. That's the question, yeah. yeah. I believe this comes to us every year, I think. Yes. So my question is, does it have to, or can we do a like a five-year exemption? I don't know. Director LaFrance. So with the lecture assent, you can. Anything over one year of a permissive tax exemption needs to have a lecture assent. So we'd have to get, um, it would be a process involved to get the area C uh ascent i guess we haven't done this before anything over one year okay i'll, I'll talk to russell at ead sometime thank you okay any other questions move it okay uh we probably can't move them all together right person correct <laughs> we'll do first second and third reading and of the two bylaws um, wait, 1785 and 1787. Mm -hmm. 1785. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Move adoption. Thank you. That's okay. Uh, seconded by Director Rainbow. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Monica, there we are. We're at 8.12 uh, amendments to the SLRD directed remuneration bylaw and approval of paid maternity and parental leave for board members. Board policy overview. Um, so, this report is related to the adoption of a paid maternity and parental leave policy for board members, uh, which was previously brought to the board. Um, so here's a proposed uh, paid maternity and parental leave policy for board members and the director's remuneration amendment bylaw for complete reading and adoption. Um, happy to take any questions if there are any. Are there any questions? This is good work. It was well done. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. A long time, but <laughs> finally got there. <laughs> what needs to be moved? So we'll move first, second, and third reading. Moved by Director DeMare, seconded by Director Rainbow. Comments? Are there anyone opposed? Carries. Can I had a comment? Nope. Sorry. Yeah. Am I too late to make oh. a comment? Nope. Go ahead. I just want to thank Councillor Stoner for bringing this forward. 
it takes courage to uh, be a young person in politics and prioritize your family uh, along with your role in the public. So uh, I applaud her for bringing this forward to the board. And I thank the board uh, for making this a more inclusive table going forward and for staff for supporting the effort on their side as well. Thank you, Director Elliott. This looks really good on all of us, I think. Yeah. So we will move adoption of the bylaw, moved by Director Mack, seconded by Director Stoner. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. And could we approve the policy as laid out? Moved by Director Birch Jones, seconded by Director Stoner. Comments on the policy? Go ahead. Uh, I do want to thank the rest of the board for the support and for staff and doing the work. I, it's my understanding, I think we're the first regional district to do this. Um, so I think it's worth celebrating. Uh, and I definitely think it's worth sharing. So thanks to everybody for being leaders. Great. Thank you. Okay. I'll call the question. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Sometimes things are easy to do. We both right. are in the village and you're making it as we speak. Yes. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. yeah. Yeah. I was just saying we'll we'll ask Thomas to put out a compressor on it and have her quote from you. Yeah. Uh great 8.13. We have already dealt with that. 8.14 we have. Yeah. You should have a quote in that press from one of the older folks as well. Okay. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's, I think that's important. Okay. Um, it was already fine. I made me. Yes. <laughs> then, uh, then oh, we're we back to 9.1. Still don't have all my pages in order. Okay, I found it. CAO Purple Avenue. Nothing, thank you. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, just a minute. <laughs> Two. Uh, Next, 9.2. 9.2 is an information report regarding the elections by affirmation in the SLRD and um, and the trustee for area five is also claimed that you still have an election happening for area four. Okay. Trustee for area five is Celeste, by the way. So, right. so congratulations to the four of you and to Ms. Bickford, director, no, trustee Bickford. Um, and thank you for your service and stepping up again. I am grateful to be working with you and learning from you. Um, our school trustee was also elected by acclamation for historic and I do believe. I mean, I realize that's a district that goes the other way, but for the, part of the regional district. It's part yeah. of the regional district. Thank you. Uh, so move receipt of the information. Yeah. Moved by Director Max, seconded by Director J uh, Stoner. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Um, 9.3, orange shirt day proclamation. We wore our orange shirts yesterday. Mike is wearing his today. Thank you. And Ralph has his in his bag. Um, so would someone like to make the proclamation as laid out in the report? Moved by Director Max, second by Director Rainbow. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Uh, 9.4. This is a request for decision for the Shatlium Cultural Center Memorandum of Understanding. Just cutting your glass. No, it, it, I'll try and take any. Okay. After our Are there any questions regarding? Yeah. Is Jeanette here? Oh, okay. Let me Jeanette's here for questions. Yeah. If anyone has questions, let's get her in. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ms. Nadon. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So Hi. it's Jeanette, Jeanette Naden here, communications and engagement consultant, presenting a request for decision to the board regarding the Statlium Cultural Center Mem Memorandum of Understanding. Um, so I'm not sure if you would like me to go through my report or just be available for questions. I think just questions is fine. Go ahead, okay. Director Mayor. Chair, Ms. Nadon, I was curious if the checkup was uh, involved in this process. 
since they're not part of the LTC anymore? Uh, yes, thanks for that question, Director DeMere. Uh, actually, just the day before yesterday, we learned that uh, Clicket has uh, agreed to sign on to the MOU, um, and they have also shared the MOU with the um, Papetla Council as well. Uh, Papetla Council has not yet had an opportunity to review the MOU, so we're not sure if the, if the traditional council will be signing on, but my understanding is that Clicket is uh, prepared to sign on to the MOU, so it will need to be updated to include Clicket community and possibly Papetla Council as well. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, uh, would anyone like to move that we sign the MOU and uh, following the approval of the MOU by the Lillooet Tribal Council and District of Lillooet Council, uh, the board chair and corporate officer be authorized to sign the MOU. I'd like to move that and, and thanks, thanks for the work on this. This has been a very, it's been going on for so long, stop, start, and then a few steps back and then forward and then Jeanette, sort of all of a sudden we had a lot of activity and I'm really happy that we've caught up to it and that we're here now. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to second it, please. Seconded by Director Weeb. Any further comment? Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And we're bringing Director LaFrance back in. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Ms. Nathan. Nice to see you all. Thank you. See ya. <laughs> Bye. Director LaFrance, you're back. We're on uh, second quarter financials for all services. I'll turn it over to you. All right. So before you is the second quarter financial statements, which review January to June 2022 actual figures compared to the approved annual 2022 budget within the financial plan. And I'm showing the available budget remaining and then also showing corresponding figures for 2021 for reference. Um, I did an additional analysis this time, just looking at the summary of a surplus remaining at the end of June. And there were some concerns, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll re review them. So the Utilities and Environmental Services Department shows as a deficit right now, but that is because we charge the overhead charge at the beginning of the year. And as the year progresses um, and the staff time allocation revenue is developed. So this department charges out all of their time to the services that they, that they work on. And then this revenue comes into their cost center as the year progresses. So it should level off. The other concern was um, the Lillooet Camel's Foot TV and radio read broadcasting. And that's due to the service amendment work that was done and the additional time allocation for that work. So in the budget season for the budget for 2023 will address how we're going to um, compensate and how what revenue we're going to use for um, that deficit, if not taxation. Um, and then the Goldbridge Water. So there was a pump failure in Goldbridge Water Service that did create unexpected emergency um, expenses. And so this potentially will go into deficit. As of today, it still has not gone into a deficit situation. So I'm just watching out for that service. And um, those are the only um, items to note. Um, and I'll take any questions if anybody has any questions on these Q2 financials. Great, thank you very much. Question, Director Rich Jones. Thank you. Um, Thank you for the report. I can't say that I read it all. I, I can only look at a few pages and I, my eyes start to jiggle. And I, anyway, I certainly saw the brackets, $4,450.55 in deficit with LCTVRA, as we affectionately call it. So that is costs of staff time. And because we didn't tax last year, we're going into the red. However, we will tax next year with the smaller service area 
And since their budgets have been coming in a little bit low, there shouldn't be any, any pressure beyond what we would be routinely doing, if I understand it. I'm not worried about this. Um, it's gonna be made up in the next cycle, correct? Yeah, okay. so when we review the budget in detail, we'll go over um, all the revenue sources. Most likely it will be taxation that will, re will recover these funds. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? <clears throat> Seeing none, uh, I guess we need a motion to include the information report. Moved by Director Birch Jones, seconded by Director DeMere. Any other comments? I'll say <laughs> thank you, uh, and we'll see you again in the next quarter for that. <laughs> um, call the question anyone opposed? Motion carries. We now have 9.6, which is an asset management planning program funding application. And we have Director LaFrance speaking to it or? Nope. No, okay. Um, yeah, that's okay. Uh, she has a brief presentation for the board. Oh, sorry. Okay. No, I have it on my note here. Yes, just a presentation. Yeah. I'm following my notes. <laughs> not winging it. <laughs> We're doing fine. We're making progress. Good afternoon, Celia. Uh, Ms. Albertson, thank you for being here. We look forward to your presentation regarding the UBCM asset management planning application. We'll turn it over to you. Hello, and thank you. I am Silly Albrechtson, Accountant Asset Management, and I will go over the request for decision for the UBCM Asset Management Planning Program funding application. Uh, this application does require a board resolution and indicating support of the proposed activities. Um, so this program will fund up to 50% of an asset management project to a maximum of $25,000. The total cost for this project is estimated to be $56,575. Of this, staff time is estimated at $22,375 and is an eligible cost of the grant. $34,200 is advisory services recommended to move the project forward. Their recommendation is that the remainder of the SLRD contribution of $9,200 is funded by the Community Works Fund, which is formerly the Gas Tax Fund, to a maximum of $10,000. So this asset management strategy aims to answer three, three questions. Um, number one, where are we now? Uh, second, where do we want to be? And third, how do we get there? Uh, and it's a communication tool. It will set priorities. It will indicate the resources needed or required, and it will outline the key steps. The outcomes of the project will be an updated asset management policy. Our last one is from 2017, and it does need an update an asset management strategy, which will include asset management objectives, smart targets and processes, and alignment of competencies, capacities with the asset management objectives. It will also uh, include an asset management program governance structure or framework, if you will. Uh, the project fits within the asset management BC framework, and the asset management strategy is the building block for the implementation activities of our asset management program at the SRD for sustainable service delivery. It's also the natural next step after the corporate asset management plan and before the integrated sustainable service delivery plan. And if the board has any questions, I'm here to answer them. Great, thank you. Question, Director Birch-Jones. Thank you. Thank you for your report. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. <laughs> um, just when I saw the when you third, third that the money from the gas tax community works fund, how which which little pot is that divided between the areas or how would that uh, yes, just equally or all from area D? Yeah, okay. It's, good. <laughs> good. it's equally divided, I believe. Thank you. Yes, it's it's a pot for the SLRB for all the electoral areas. 
Uh, this is a to the chair. Uh, France, just curious, could we not use the general select fund? So um, for electoral areas will be involved in this. Yeah, general select could be an alternative use if the community works fund wasn't what the, the uh, board wishes to use. We went to the community works fund because there was previous resolutions that stated that, you know, if we don't receive um, grants or if the full grant doesn't cover the whole project, then, then we would go to community works funds. But there is options to review other other um, sources of funding. Would anyone like to make the motion? Or do you have a question? I'll, I'll make a motion. I'll make the motion. Very present. Sorry, the first um, three. Okay, the first three. What, what motion are we talking about? So well, that uh, like we apply for $25,000 for development of an asset management strategy that we apply for, uh, that we support the development of the strategy and governance structure to be submitted to the asset management planning program and that in support of the grant application, uh, the SLRD commits up to $10,000 of uh, gas tax community works funds for a total estimated project cost of $56,575 from the general government budget. But like if those make, grants yeah. aren't granted. I, I, I thought I'd like to make an amendment to the third that. Yeah. I thought that's what I, I thought I was seconding an amendment. Okay, sorry. So we have the motion on the floor, moved by, and then and then you can amend it. But what? were you moving this motion? No, we'll move that, and then I'll make an amendment. Oh, okay. Okay. So we're amending the third that to instead of gas tax to the community select, select fund. fund. Yes. Sure, that's better. Um, Select funds are delegated to the EAD. Yeah. So they can't be. Okay. So do you want to? Oh, boy. Can we just keep things simple and take the advice and stop on this? We yeah. know. It's a gas tax is fine. Yeah. I'm running low on gas tax. Hmm. Do you want to take it back to EAD and have this come back to a future board yeah. discussion? Yeah. Can we do that, Director Lebrun? Suzanne has a comment. Go ahead. It does need to have approval at this meeting um, in some form to be able to apply for this grant. Um, there might be, you know, there they do require resolution for this grant application, but potentially they would allow a late resolution to be used. So we would apply without the resolution potentially and then have a resolution sent afterwards would be the option. Okay, I'm going to go to Director okay. Dermere, then you. So the, the 10,000 is $2,000 each? 2,500. 2,500. Right, it would be split between the four evenly. Okay, I'll move it as is. Do you have a question? I can defer the question. I'll Okay. okay, so we're moving is. the motion as laid out in the package. Yeah. The first three that's as yeah. was not amended. Right. We didn't have seconders. I'm gonna call the question, is there anyone opposed? Motion carries. And the next that is that uh, CAO or designate be authorized to sign the applications as required <laughs> by. Yeah. Moved by Director Rainbow, seconded by Director Birch Jones. Comments, anyone opposed? Motion carries. So if I could ask a procedural question then. Sure. If at the next EAD we passed a motion to say that we would like this money to come from general so that we, we could do that. And then bring it forward to the board next year or Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we we can discuss it. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you to both of you for being here. We're gonna move uh to nine point seven. Yes. <laughs> uh, building permits and for footings and foundations for residential townhouses at Britannia Beach. And we're going back to Director Jim. Chair, um, Kim Needham, Director of Planning and Development Services at the SLRD. Um, so this uh, report has to do with um, allowing for the construction of 
foundations and footings for the remaining townhouses at Miami Beach in advance of the full flood protection um, system construction. Just an update. So the SLRD did receive a license of occupation from the province for the strip of land um, adjacent to the BODC site for, for uh, community flood proof flood protection and um, parks use. So that was a, a win um, that took several years. Uh, Graham Hayward, uh, or Haywood, who used to uh, work here, who's now passed, unfortunately, worked uh, a lot on that project. And I, I took it over um, afterwards. And so um, it's a really big win for us to get, to get that um, license of occupation from the Crown. Uh, we have a number of flood protection requirements that need to be met prior to anything more than footings and foundations for the remainder of the townhouses. Um, but there are crews on site and the developer has asked that we um, enable them to at least do some basic work uh, prior to um, doing framing. So that's what this request is about. Okay, any questions? <clears throat> Go ahead. Now, um, now we have that license of occupation. Does that mean that BODC can now go ahead with the doing the riprap on the, and the flood protection? Yes, exactly. So the riprap is about one third constructed right now. They've got the toll in um, and they are, they've mostly filled the main site and they have partially filled the crown site. So once the bill is in, once the, the riprap barriers are constructed and once we have um, assurance from the engineers that all of the conditions set out in their reports have been met, then we can release final building permits. So if we just follow up on that. So, so now uh, I know they were waiting for various things from the government. That's all in place then, is it? Yep. <laughs> great, that's great. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Seeing none, would anyone like to make the motion that's yep. laid out? We'll move by, go ahead. One of them. One, One at a time. time. Oh, okay. So, so that's there. Uh, that the board resolution of July 27th be rescinded, moved by Director Vaino, seconded yeah. by Director Rich Jones. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. And that there shall uh, be no issuance of building permits with respect to the BODC as contemplated. Well, that's, I, I, I move all of that. Move all of that. Yeah. Moved by Director Rainbow, second by Director Mack. Any comments? Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Great. Thank you. 9.8, uh, temporary use permit policy, 4.7 amendment. Oh, yeah, this particular application, we are going to defer to the October meeting. Okay. We request that it be deferred. Yes. Motion to defer, moved by Director Richmond, seconded by Director Robert Jones. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Your camera showing here. Just a comment on that one, if I can. Um, Pardon me. Just a comment on that one, that just so you know, we, this is not a problem in Area B, and and if if you'd like it to be contemplated in Area B, I'd like the Agricultural Advisory Committee to look at it for. Okay. So Can you send me an email on that and we just sure. get it offline? Uh, 9.9 .9, Proclamation of the Circular Economy Month of October. I have someone make the motion that we make the proclamation. Moved by Director Stoner, second by Director Mack. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. 9.10 An information report was presented to us, and we do have Mary Lou LeBlanc to answer any questions. No. Uh, without singing, but we are going to recognize Ms. LeBlanc. Happy birthday. Why well, can't we Happy sing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not a good we will thank you. No, no, no. Thank you for being here today. Uh, we have uh, Samuel Thompson and Ms. LeBlanc here to present on the, or not present, they're not here to present, they're here to answer any questions if anyone has about the solid waste reuse facility update. Any questions from anybody? 
Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just uh, curious. Uh, it says items with safety certificates, certifications. Shouldn't that be without safety certifications? I'll see that way. That will be. Um... That is under a prohibited materials, is that correct? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. So we we don't feel staff don't feel comfortable accepting items with a safety certificate because then it means that staff will be liable to our attendant will be liable to oversee that and make sure that they have the stickers, the date is still up to date. Um, and that put quite a bit of liability on attendance. So we rather don't accept those items. Um, as we move along, as we see issues and what people would like us to accept, then we can revisit um, the list of materials accepted and prohibited. It's just that in the past, we never had such a list and it was really left up to the attendant to accept and don't accept materials. And that kind of created issues beyond, like between staff and um, users. Okay. Uh, another question is why clothes are accepted? Clothes? Items are not accepted. Um, again, there's a kind of like health and safety um, issues in there. We don't have any program. We rather people to use um, marketplace and Facebook and donation on that. Um, it's a little bit like the mattresses. We don't know from which, what kind of house it's coming. Uh, it might sound a little bit harsh but we still need to keep those um, areas um, safe as well as some of those shed don't are not closed. So it's open up to the, like if it's raining, if it's snowing, that then it's gonna, just gonna deteriorate quite quickly. Okay, one last one is building materials. I can understand lumber and, and doors and this and that windows, but how about the smaller items like nails, boxes, and of nails or, or uh, you know, foreign ties or in a box like this. Most of our reuse reuse shed are not big enough um, yeah. to accept, uh, and it's really hard to um, find a good way. Again, staff could review uh, the list and make it a little bit more site specific, mm -hmm. but with that. Um, list of items, we were trying to keep it um, not as site specific, but more um, usable for everyone. Yeah, I'd like to see it more site specific for each area. We're all different. Because okay. we don't we don't have any other place to take it to. That's all we've got is that free store. Director Reeve, go ahead. trying to unmute and lower my hand all at the same time here. Um, I just wanted to make a comment. And I had talked to Marie here at our bakery as she was coming out of our bakery, going up to our landfill. Um, just for future, when we're making decisions, like it was decided that all the reuse-its would roll out at one time. And then as a board, we decided to let... <clears throat> Area A, <laughs> go ahead of that. That created quite a havoc here in Lillooet, even though we're not going to have a free store because we don't have a contractor that wants to take care of it, which needs to come into play. But there was a lot of, um, I had a lot of people contacting me. How come theirs is open and ours isn't open and this, that, and the other thing. So I think when our staff, says let's do it all at the same time maybe we should heed their advice <laughs> nah <laughs> <laughs> <It's> so easy <laughs> <laughs> 
It's a great social enterprise <laughs> opportunity, Barb. You should look into it. <laughs> um, thank you for that comment. Any other comments or questions, Director Bergstrom? It <laughs> just does. Staff know there's quite a bit of interest in in uh, Lillooet and Area B to have this this service available. People hate wasting it and throwing it in the landfill, or those that do hate it really hate it with a passion enough to complain about. And it's been a long time closed, like really a long time. And so, um, any signs of progress are welcome. So I, I would suggest to the area director and the municipal director from Lillooet that it was 32 years ago that the municipality in Whistler was saying, we have this waste stream, we need to deal with it. We can't keep sending it to Rebanco or wherever it was being sent 32 years ago. And Whistler Community Social Services said, we can monetize that and put that money into social services. It's a nonprofit, it's separate, it's it's a raging success, like to the point where they are not subsidized by any levels of government. And they provide 35 programs of social programming in our community, and they get four metric tons of waste every single day. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So I would recommend that nonprofits in the Lillooet area well, I do believe that the staff have tried to contact, and I, I do think that the nonprofits that, that Mary Lou's been in touch with, and I, I don't have any more bright ideas for her. She's done a good job, but if they're exhausted. They're stretched to capacity. There isn't there isn't that extra person to pick that job up. We we definitely could use, mm -hmm. would like to do that. And yeah. we will do that when we can. And I can certainly put you in touch with um, the directors that mm -hmm. found the sure, job thank and you. a good use of time. and. Well, with that, maybe, that maybe, maybe we even help someone get set up to do that. Did you lose Mary Lou? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, let me see if she's back in there. Nope, she's not back. Okay, in so a motion to receive. Motion to receive. Nope, this was a, uh, no, that, yeah, this would be information. Now we're on nine point. Uh, so motion to receive, Director Richmond, Director Mack, anyone opposed? Motion carries. 9.11. Uh, this is the reuse shed. Solid waste uh, facilities policy. And I think we've had some time with this. So we have to rescind the existing policy and approve the new policy. Are there any we'll questions? Rescind. Mm -hmm. we'll rescind, seconded by Director DeMare. Uh, a question just on some wording. So I'm rescinding or on. Yes, is exceedance, is that a word? Exceed, I just, uh, I'm just trying to find it here, page four. Yeah, I'm gonna call the question on being rescinded. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. And we will uh, ensure that the language uh, spell checked. That's how you spell rescinded. Is that the question? No, no. the question is on exceedance, but page four, nine, B, yeah. oh. materially important. No, no, no. Uh, would anyone like to move the new policy? Moved by Director Stoner, second by Director DeMair. Is there anyone opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Thank you to the staff that put that together. And we have Allison here for 9.12. Regarding the Friendship Trail Federal Act of Transportation Planning Grant, this is exciting to see. So uh, we successfully received a grant from the Federal Act of Transportation see. Grant to do 43500 to do some planning uh, along the Friendship Trail. Um, a big piece of that is for the route through Lewat Nation, through the reserve lands. Um, Lewat Nation Lands and Resources Department is going to lead the community consultation on that, which will help us a great deal to actually get out to the community. Um, as well as some right away um, stuff that we need to tidy up along the route. So we received the grant, but we don't have a uh, board resolution for the CAO to sign the agreement. So that's my name today. Okay. Moved by Director Mack, seconded by Director Richmond. Any comments? Is there anyone opposed? Motion carries. Friendship. <laughs> 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 
Yes, the friendship to Yeah, it's the connected from where it ends in the industrial work in the UI nation because it's kind of don't yeah, give your licenses, make any motions or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a it's just a completed thing, hush button, make sure that. Just uh, I knew it was a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 We're on 9.13, the wildland truck purchase, and we have Mr. Phillips here to answer any questions anyone may have on the report. I see no questions. Wonderful. It's yeah. wonderful. It is. Thank you very much, Mr. Phillips, for your work on this report. And you would uh, like a, re um, a resolution to approve the purchasing? I'll move that. Oh, you know, move that's how moved I Moved by Director Matt, seconded by Director Rainbow. Is there anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Hi, bye. I think he's staying for the next one. Yeah. And now we have 9.14. This is a Fire Smart uh, final status report, and we have mode, Lucier. We've never had you present to us. Welcome. Nice to see you. Thank, Thank you, Chair. For I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. My name is Maud Lucier. I am the Fire Smart Administrator. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Board members. So I'm here to present the information report for Fire Smart Residential Risk Reduction for Seniors. Um, in 2021, the SLRD and the District of Lillooet received $358,000 from UBCM for a project titled Fire Smart Residential Risk Reduction for Seniors. Um, the goal was to build local wildfire resiliency and assist communities to recover from the economic impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. Three positions were created in order to deliver the project one fire smart administrator, one fire smart coordinator, and one contract for a team of certified arborists. Um, the project was available to primary resident, residence owners age 65 and older in the district and SLRD areas A, B, and C. So the participants first booked a home eviction zone assessment and then another appointment with a crew uh, to do some vegetation removal on their properties. The vegetation removal uh, was based on the recommendations that were issued by the fire smart coordinators for each property. Uh, it consisted mostly of weed whacking, hedge trimming, heavy pruning, tree removal, and the safe disposal of all the debris. Um, in total, we uh, 102 properties owned by the seniors received a fire smart home ignition zone assessment in the district and in the SLRD. 98 of these properties received the vegetation fuel removal. So the response and the feedback that we received from the communities was overwhelmingly positive, so much so that we anticipate some challenges related to staff capacity and sourcing enough qualified contractors in the future to meet the growing demand for fire smart activities across the entire regional district. Mm -hmm. So we have received funding for 2022 and we're currently project planning uh, for this year and the next. So mm -hmm. if you have any questions, um, I'm happy to answer them. Great. Thank you very thank much. You. Question, Director Mayor. Yeah, thank you for the for the report and the work on this. In area A, I did get a lot of comments regarding that 65 year and you had to live there. Um, you know, as you know, we have a big percentage of our uh, population around resident property owners. So a lot of the elderly people weren't qualified for this. 
Just moving forward with the new program, is it going to be set up the same way? Um, uh, through the chair, if I can answer, the, the, um, this program was a one-time uh, opportunity that was uh, created to, uh, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. So the chances of this particular stream uh, fund uh, opportunity coming back are very uh, slim. Uh, mm -hmm. Any other <clears throat> fire smart activity or a grant that we have applied for and will apply for uh, will not be subjected to the same restrictions. Um, we have uh, we have delivered fire smart activities in the past which were uh, open to all residents, primary residents or not. So it was just for this particular program that these restrictions were on. Thank you. Thank you. Question from Director Weeb. I'm technically challenged over here. <laughs> Um, I have two questions actually. So the new funding moving into the next couple of years, is that for assessments or is that for removals and whatnot as well for a certain age group? If somebody could answer that one, I'll, I'll leave that one first. <laughs> uh, if I may answer through the chair, um... The, uh, we have already received some funding. Um, I'm not sure if I understand your question correctly. Um, the age restriction was solely uh, for the stream in 2021. It was a COVID-19 recovery fund. And the main goal was to create jobs and also provide fire smart uh, activities. Uh, moving forward, we, uh, the home assessment is kind of the foundation of any fire smart activity because it provides the homeowner some sort of template uh, from which to, uh, he can address some um, uh, issues or uh, he is given recommend they are given recommendations to uh, increase the resiliency to wildfire on their property. And so usually what we do is that in our activities, uh, for example, we have a rebates program, the homeowner would receive a free uh, home ignition zone assessment. And then if they are willing to do the work, mm -hmm. we would uh, alleviate some of the expenses by offering a rebate uh, as they mark their hours or if they submit a, a receipt for the work being completed by a contractor, let's say. We have run this program, this particular activity in the past and uh, it was very well received and very popular. I, I hope I answered your question. Yes, you did. And um, when they did the home assessment here at my home, um, we have composite decking and it was just put on this summer and nobody seemed to know if that was better than wood or not better than wood or what the hazards of that would be. And um, that was a concern for me, um, just not having that answer if anybody has it now or if somebody <laughs> could look into it and get back to me, I'd really appreciate it, thank you. Uh, through the chair, if I could answer. Um, if uh, maybe outside of this meeting, because it pertains to your, your house uh, uh, specifically, I would be happy to uh, uh, answer that by email. Uh, but uh, for the benefit of everybody, um, the main uh, uh, objective is to create a break between the vegetation and your property. So of course, uh, any adjacent uh, structure like um, a, a deck or a fence, as long as uh, it is kept clean and under is uh, free of debris, it could uh, be sufficient to, let's say, resist ignition coming from embers. But again, I'm offering to uh, answer uh, more thoroughly your question outside of this meeting. Thank you. 
Are there any other questions regarding the information report? Go ahead, Director so, Jones. Absolutely excellent program. Just one of the best things okay. to happen in Area B. Um, and you've really got some beautiful momentum going now. So am I understanding it that you you are applying for more funding or you've already received more funding? We're, we're carrying on. We're having a problem with capacity to provide it, but we have the funding. Is that right? Yeah, so we received uh, uh, the funding and uh, we ran into a little bit of a, a hiccup because we haven't received many applications to, to uh, go forward with the delivery. So we, what we've done is that we've asked UBCM to give us a little bit of a delay for, right. for uh, enabling us to uh, um, rework some of the, uh, of the requests for interest. And now we're ready to post again and accept uh, uh, proposals for the delivery of the 2022 uh, activities commencing. Some activities will commence now and will be carried uh, over 2023. And so we also preparing to uh, submit a, a request for uh, a grant application for 2023 and 2024 and so on and so on. <laughs> Right. You have a question? Yeah. Um, comment first. I, I, Area D was not included in the, this this part of the program. I don't know if I voted against it or what. The question is: um, Would Area D be included in any future programs? Yes, that is the intention uh, of including the entire uh, SLRD, and the reason why we. we I mean, pertaining to this particular information report, the reason why uh, Area D was not included in this particular at this at that particular moment was uh, for um, consultant cost reasons. Um, and moving forward, uh, I would I I would like to see the entire SLRD being as far as smart as possible. And of course, this will include every area. So to answer your question, sorry, through the chair, yes. Okay, would anyone like to move receipt of the yes. information? Moved by Director Richmond, seconded by Director Matt. Thank you very much for your presentation. Look forward to seeing you again soon. I'll call the question, anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, board members. Thank you. Uh, we've done 9.15. We are now on the uh, board round table. I'm going to start a timer. Yeah. One minute to talk about one thing in your areas. Put on board. One minute. Sound. Wait, we're going one minute. We're stopping you. Yeah. I can start with Tony. One minute. You've already had your regional moment. So I don't have. She's waving. You're taking up my time. One, one thing I didn't tell you was um, uh, Alex Morrissey, who has been a volunteer firefighter in, in Britannia Beach for the last four years, has just got herself hired by Vancouver Fire Department as a full-time professional firefighter. And I thought that was magnificent news. I was really happy to hear that. Um, uh, the Britannia Beach Playground is starting this afternoon. So I'm told, I'm gonna to check on the way home. And uh, one last thing, I will be sending you some information about a raffle that the firefighters are, are, are doing in, in Britannia Beach. Um, when David Ritberg passed, uh, it was before he was able to use the going at the gift, the retirement gift that the SLRD gave him. Denise, his wife, has um, organized this raffle uh, and um, I would like us to, to, to support it. So I'll send you that information. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was, yes, that that was less than a minute. And one item, biggest item at the table, we wind down the term is our affordable housing project and our public hearing two nights ago, uh, coming to council on October 4th. Yeah. Director Rich Jones. <clears throat> the Lillooet Brewing Company, the brewery in Lillooet is open. <laughs> oh, samples at the next EAD meeting. Uh, yes. And also there's a new cidery business that is apparently doing pretty well. Um, I'm very happy about some of the work we've gotten done here with the LCTBR bylaws and, and some of the other. We had the shoreline cleanup last weekend and we only picked up 45 kilograms of garbage, which is pretty good. 
sockeye are running, the birds are coming this way, the fish are going that way. Uh, we had um, the fire guys, Mark and Rob were up at Seton and they had some good meetings with some of the folks up there. So that's, it. yeah, I just feel like there's been a lot of progress in the movement post COVID. It's, it's all pretty positive. Yeah. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Director Mack. I will uh, say that uh, in Area C, everything's moving along just fine. And uh, you can have my other 30 seconds. <laughs> uh, I just have two things. Um, last year, we struck an inclusion, diversity, and equity access committee at the District of It's more of an internal focus committee for uh, the organization. But on Tuesday, they presented their uh, inclusion strategy called Ideas in Action, which is a really phenomenal report uh, on how we're going to make our organization more inclusive and accessible. So very proud of that work. Uh, the other thing is we spoke uh, or updated the board a while ago, uh, we're trying to update our public works facility and we went to an AAP process back in the spring and it actually failed. It was the first AAP process that failed uh, in the history of us doing AAPs. Uh, there was a fairly concerted effort of getting signatures against it uh, and a misinformation campaign that went around with that. So uh, as a district, we decided to go out for a second AAP uh, and not go to assent uh, voting. And on our second round, we only had seven signatures in opposition. And so uh, that second round was successful and we're able now to uh, fund and budget for our new public works facility, which means in this term, we'll have uh, one fire hall constructed, one a second fire hall started and the funding in place for our public works facility all completed in the last four years. Nice, very good. Yeah, got a full one minute. Uh, there early we received $400,000 funding from the Forest Employment pro Program to create two gravel pits, one each side of the summit and crushed material. I've got preliminary counts on the early vehicle counts. 2019, it was 135 a day average. Last year was 375 average. Um, I'll skip right to this. The UBCM requested uh, a director to be on the board. I've applied for it and my, my application is in. So waiting yeah. to see if I get on this board. They do phenomenal work if you have a look. Yeah. Of course, enhancement society. Okay. So yeah. great. Thank you for applying. Director Forsyth. <laughs> I get a minute. You get a minute to talk about Whistler. What might be of interest to the board members is we at our last meeting we passed a delegation bylaw that I'm hopeful will streamline staff time of delivering reports to council. So we delegated to staff that they can make decisions about side setbacks and variance permits. So if somebody's got an eaves that hangs over by a foot, council doesn't have to see that at a committee meeting. They don't need to make a report about it. So I'm hopeful that it'll streamline a lot. So keep in touch with us. And uh, if we're still working in a couple of months, we can let you know how it's going. But yeah, hopefully it's a because it's been a big bee in the builder's bonnet uh, about how long staff time takes at uh, the building department. So hopefully this will you know, help. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Director Weeb, your turn. Well, I don't know after Director Birch Jones there. Um, yes, our brewery is open, but the grand opening is this weekend if anybody wants to come over for it. Um, tomorrow is Orange Shirt Truth and Reconciliation Day starting at the Care Center at about 1.30. There'll be a parade and a grand ceremony down at the Rec Center along with speeches and a few other things. And they are going to make it a two-day event where they have bouncy houses and all kinds of neat things for the kids. So hopefully a lot of families show up for lunch, supper, and so on. Um, our rec center is, there's all kinds of new programs going on in their upcoming and at present and whatnot. So it's quite exciting. Uh, they're offering jujitsu. I don't think I will go to it, but <laughs> <laughs> it, it could be quite interesting if Director Birch Jones would like to try it. She could maybe take her dog and get it trained. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Good job, they're not right. Thank you, sticking to your minute. That's great. Well done, everybody.
Let's move along to 10.2, the Darcy Water Distribution Upgrade, Director Matt. I'll move that. By I'll second Matt, it. Second by Director Rainbow. Anyone opposed? Motion well, carries. Look at that one. Oh, wrong page. Okay. Uh, the next is 11.1. This is corresponding to action. We've received this letter and it's already been contemplated. So can I have someone move your seat? Moved by Director Rainbow, second by Director Max. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. 11.2, House Sound Biosphere Regional Initiative Society Unity Plan Discussion Paper. Motion to receive by Director Richmond. Second, I'll let you make a comment. Second by Director Stoner, comments? Um. I just wanted to ask the board if we wanted to be involved in this at all. I think the unity plan is uh, really important. And so even just a letter of support, uh, recognizing that we might not have capacity to engage at this point, but I think that uh, the work being done in a cat's and how sound uh, really does touch on a large portion of the regional district. And I think a letter of support would go a long way if we don't have the time to engage in the discussion paper. We're founding members of the house sound biosphere yeah. region. And we participate in every single region. We're actually hosting the next forum. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's implied, but if you'd like to write a letter, if you want to make a motion to write a letter of support for this. Yes, I just wonder then as founding members, if anybody else from the board has feedback on the discussion paper, or if we just don't have capacity to address that at this time. Go ahead, Director Rich Jones. I, I know it was heartbreaking reading through it. I mean, there's a lot of input that would be valuable to provide, but I also wonder about the timing. I, I know that we hired, but we don't have a climate action person on staff, which is yeah. its own little tragedy. But I, yeah, it's phenomenal what these guys are doing. It's great and we support it, but I certainly didn't put my hand up to provide feedback on this one. Yeah. So I might just move that we write a letter uh, reiterating our support, but a lack of capacity at the moment to engage, okay. uh, but to not discount us in the future in terms of where this management plan is going. Okay. Yeah, I, I, would, I would second that. I, I think Ruth Simons is, is looking for some sort of tangible support. Uh, I'd like, to, like us to do that. Okay. I just don't want to create a bunch of staff time. No, that no, we don't no. have. Yes. Okay. So the motion is to write a letter of support, so, indicating support, but that we don't have the staff capacity or yeah. uh, capacity at this time, but that we would continue to engage. So we've already moved and seconded receipt. So if we could just finish receiving the letter okay. and then do another. Call motion. the question on receiving. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. New motion. Write the letter sure. as indicated. Director Stoner, Director Rainbow. Any further comments? Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, 11.3, request for funding for the Minto Communication Society. And I'd like to go to Director Mayor on these issues. Do you, you're comfortable? Yeah, I'm comfortable, but the, the we already made a motion earlier to uh, no, write right a here. letter. Yeah. So I, I They've they've got uh, a draft that could be used. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd like to uh, um, make the motion that that we use the, the draft letter that they have presented. But we have a recommendation from the um, committee of will to write a letter of support. So we don't make this one. Okay. The second part. The second the part is the request for funding of $20,000. Yeah, I'll make that. Yeah, Moved we'll by Director Demare, seconded by Director Rainbow. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. That, that earlier motion we had, we could still take Sal's suggestion and use their draft. Well, yeah. yeah. We don't need another resolution. No, really. Okay. Uh, was there any late business additional? Ember Fire Smart Fox? In the late business. It's 13.2. Okay. Cool. I'm looking at the previous agenda. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go to 13.1, which is the Squamish Live Library Southern Felt Fund. 
And would anyone like to make that motion? No, certainly, I will. Moved by Director Rainbow, second by Director Mack. Any comments? Anyone opposed? Motion carries. And this is a correspondence for action requesting funding uh, from the Lillooet Fire Department requesting $4,000. Moved by Director Birch Jones, seconded by Director Mack. Tom from, from Area B Health Funds, please. It's in the motion. Okay. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Any notice of motion? Great. Um, we will now. We don't need to do this recess, um, right? Correct. No recess. Item 16 the, um, the recommendation from the committee of all on the letter of support. Okay. So moved that. Director DeMair, or Director Mack, then seconded by Director DeMair. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. And we will mo move to go into close, please. Moved by Director Mack, seconded by Director Stoner. Anyone opposed? Mm -hmm. 